Welcome to Easy Architecture, your guide to the built environment. What is Gothic architecture and what makes it unique? Gothic architecture came out of the Middle Ages, with the first truly Gothic building appearing around 1140 AD. And no, it wasn't built by Goths. Whatever. It was built by the French. Oui. Contrary to modern day Goths who embrace the dark, Gothic architecture was considered uplifting for its time. Gothic cathedrals are partly recognizable because of their large walls of stained glass windows, which allowed light to fill large open spaces and create a heavenly environment. But to construct these open spaces and walls of glass, they had to be creative. Builders of the Middle Ages took traditional methods of construction from around Europe and the Near East and modified them to reduce the need for load-bearing walls, bulky columns, and build higher than ever before. Here's how they did it. The most important element of Gothic architecture is the pointed arch. Arches provide a method for opening space while maintaining the strength of the walls. They allow for things such as doors and windows. While these guys knew about the rounded arch, the pointed arch is something they imported from the Near East and can be seen in early Islamic architecture such as the Al-Aqsa Mosque. Architects of the Middle Ages borrowed the idea of the pointed arch knowing it would let them build vertically higher than what was previously possible. This is because the pointed arch was more efficient at distributing the weight of the walls and roof. Remember, these buildings were made primarily of brick and stone and were very heavy. Managing and distributing the weight was really important and the pointed arch was key in managing it all, especially when these arches were crossed to create a ribbed vaulted ceiling. Vaulted ceilings weren't a new idea either, but because the pointed arch was more effective, so was the ribbed vault. This resulted in a need for fewer columns, and those that were used were taller, thinner, and provided another distinguishing characteristic of Gothic architecture. Helping to disperse the weight carried by the pointed arches was the flying buttress, and something that gives Gothic architecture its unique silhouette. While a regular buttress butted up against the wall and kind of blended in with the masonry, a flying buttress was much more elegant and much more obvious. You see them mostly on the outside of the building as they move the lateral forces across one or more arches. Despite supporting so much weight, the flying buttress disguises the load with an almost magical design. When you combine the flying buttress, pointed arch, slender columns, and rib vaulting, you get buildings that looked unlike anything seen before. You have a building that's no longer supported by walls and has a more open interior environment. With the weight of the building taken off the walls, you also have an opportunity to fill them with something other than brick and mortar, resulting in those large windows of stained glass that help define Gothic cathedrals. Another distinguishing trait of Gothic architecture is the ornamentation. The rose window, usually above the west door, is one of the most obvious examples. It depicts the final judgment of man and is part of the Gothic tradition in which biblical and historical stories were portrayed in stained glass and sculpture throughout the cathedral. This wasn't done just for decoration. At a time when most of the population was illiterate, these embellishments made scripture and history available to everyone. And of course, a Gothic cathedral wouldn't be complete without gargoyles. On a practical level, they were spouts that moved rainwater off the roof. On a spiritual level, they scared people into going to church. Gothic architecture started in France, but the style quickly caught on and became the standard for cathedrals and churches throughout Europe. There are some local variations, like in England, where the design is more horizontal, and Italy, which embraced a more colorful ornamentation. But they all share the same basic design and engineering elements. Gothic architecture lasted until the late 1500s, around the beginning of the Renaissance, when it was gradually replaced. But the Gothic style would reappear again at different times and places in history for its association with religion and morality. And the term Gothic architecture wasn't used back in the Middle Ages when the style first emerged. It was during the Renaissance, using Goth as a derogatory term. What? No, not that kind of Goth. Goth is in the Eastern Germanic people of medieval Europe. Basically, they were calling it barbaric. Hey, not fair. Sorry, but it's okay because we love it now, even if we sometimes forget where it came from. And remember, next time you look at a church, a Gothic cathedral can be identified by the pointed arches, slender columns, ribbed vaulted ceilings, fine buttresses, rose windows, gargoyles, and ornamentation. 
Now you know something about architecture. Wasn't that easy? If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more easy architecture, be sure to like and subscribe.